What's going on everybody? It's your boy Gem Mint. I've been streaming Spider-Man 2 right here on YouTube and I'm in this room with the Marvel vs. Capcom arcades, the Marvel superheroes, and it got me thinking, what are the best comic book related video games? Before we jump into it though, if you're digging the content, leave a like on it and if you want to see more videos, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit that notification bell. We're going to jump into the number 10 game on my list, and it's none other than X-Men for the Sega Genesis. This is one that I just personally have fond memories playing as a kid. The music, the sound effects, the platforming, choosing between the four different mutants. This video shows the Cyclops playthrough, but if you were like me, everybody loved Nightcrawler flying all around that screen. But the enemies, the sound that it makes when you hit them. This one made number 10 on my list, just one that I played so much as a kid. Another one that made my list, and you might forget that this is originally based off of a comic book series, but it's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original arcade game. What was so special about this game as well is you could only play this version in the arcades. The port for NES was nothing like it, and going to the arcade after playing on home consoles, the graphics were so much better, the sound was so much better. Loved the opening stage with the fire on the bottom of the screen and you had the foot soldiers coming out of doors and elevators. One of the reasons why I love Arcade 1UP so much is that they were able to bring these ports to the home arcade in three-fourths scale. So at least we have that port and we don't have to deal with the NES version. Now I know a lot of you might be thinking, how are you going to put the Konami Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game on here and not put on the X-Men? Moving on to number 8 on the list, I put the X-Men arcade game one step above the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I think what really put it over the top was the fact that they had the 6 player dual screen version that you can play in the arcades. This was another one that you couldn't get a home port of this. You had to go into the local arcade to play this game. And it was so epic when they had that large double screen cab there. I loved how big the sprites were, the cast of characters, the mutant powers. Definitely one of my favorite X-Men games and one of my favorite comic book video games of all time. Moving on to number seven on the list. I know a lot of these games have been old school games. I'm an old school guy, but I did have to go modern for this one. From one of my favorite fighting game studios, NetherRealm comes Injustice. The first one is my favorite. I'm a huge fan of NetherRealm and Mortal Kombat. I did like Mortal Kombat vs. DC when it came out. You gotta remember, that was the first next gen fighter from, at the time, Midway, I believe on PlayStation 3, and that was super tamed down for the DC audience, but when they made Injustice, it felt right. I loved the super moves that knocked you through the stage. Here we go, Batman knocking Deathstroke into Croc, and the whole rogues gallery beats the hell out of you. My favorite was Doomsday. I loved his rushdown moveset, and you could kind of trick people whether you're going to go high or low. Injustice 2, I wasn't really much of a fan of, and that's not going to make it on the list, but I really loved the first Injustice game. Now, number six on the list could have made it on here just for the soundtrack alone if you guys know me this comic book storyline was one of the first that i read and it's one of the storylines that really hooked me into comics now we're talking about none other than spider-man and venom in maximum carnage and what was so cool about this game not only was it a 90s beat-em-up with an epic soundtrack but you can play as spider-man or venom but with the spider-man game it was a character that i loved it was a storyline that i was a huge fan of and the graphics were larger than life at the time even on this first stage where you can climb on the wall and find power-ups up there at the top of the building and then again, switching into Venom, that was the ultimate for me. Getting to choose between Peter Parker or Eddie Brock. I'm such a Venom fan, so the fact that he was playable and not just a boss that you would fight was epic. Now you gotta remember, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles didn't just have an epic arcade game, they had an amazing sequel. One of my favorite games of all time, we're talking Hi. about Turtles in Time. But this one was an epic follow-up. Everything was bigger and better. The graphics, the music, the sound effects, the bosses. Man, I love this scene in the first stage where you had the huge Krang body shooting the lasers at you. Another one that Arcade 1UP got right because they included both the original and Turtles in Time in that cab. Moving on to number oh. four, I'm actually surprised I didn't have more Spider-Man games than I did because when I really had to look at all of them, I loved the original Spider-Man games on the PlayStation. Spider-Man 1 was epic, but then Spider-Man 2, you got that free roam, you were able to touch the ground. And even now, you have the Insomniac Spider-Man for PS4, Spider-Man 2 for PS5. 
but one of my favorite Spider-Man games of all time is Spider-Man Web of Shadows. I mean, for this epic opening scene alone, the sad, dramatic music, Spider-Man walking in defeat, this was the original Venomverse. I mean, symbiotes took over every character. You can play as the symbiote and you can change any time from the red and blue costume to the symbiote. I would always do it while I was swinging in midair, and they had so many Venomized characters way before Funko Pop did it. I vividly remember fighting against the Venomized Wolverine, but this was one of the better opening scenes for any Spider-Man game, and I love the overall premise. It's basically King in Black way before that even happened. So I actually didn't put any of the Insomniac Spider-Man games on the list, and I didn't put any of the Activision Amazing Spider-Man movie adaptations, which I'm a huge fan of all of those games. But what I really had to think about my favorites, my top 10, number three, three. on the list is my last Spider-Man game. It's Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. And what's funny is this isn't even an open world game. That was like the most important thing to have for a Spider-Man game at the time. Everybody wanted to free roam around New York City, but... They had it right with this game. We've been there and done that. This was the first time we were able to actually play as Spider-Man 2099, one of my other favorite characters. You were able to choose from four different characters that all had their own levels. You could play as Symbiote Spider-Man, Spider-Man Noir, the regular Peter Parker red and blue costume, and like I said, Miguel O'Hara. I love the stages. This was one of the earlier games that I platinum on PS3, and it's one of my favorite top 10 video games of all time. All right, I'm kind of giving away my top two here because I said I didn't put any other Spider-Man games on the list. And I know a lot of you guys are going to say Ultimate Spider-Man is one of your favorites or even Ultimate Alliance. But honestly, I just never really got into those games. Number two on my list is an all-time classic, one of the best comic book related video games of all time. And of course, I'm talking about Batman Arkham Asylum. What a beautiful game that revolutionized superhero fighting games, especially with its combat system. And that's the reason why I even put it over the Insomniac Spider-Man games, because those games really were built off of what Arkham Asylum put into place. I loved all the gadgets you can use, and forget it, the stealth missions, the takedowns while you're perched up on top of a building. Now, this was a linear game. It wasn't open world, but I feel like that still gives it a lot of its charm. A game doesn't need to be open world for me to love it, and I think this one is proof of that. And we're on to number what? one. Some of you have probably figured it out, but before we get to it, let me know in the comments below what are your top 10 favorite comic book related video games as we jump into my pick. And if Arkham Asylum was number two, you know Arkham City had to be number one. I know I said the game doesn't have to be open world, but when they took that fan reception of the game, wanting an open world version that we can go around Gotham as Batman, they totally delivered and gave us such an immersed experience. Look at Batman right now gliding all around the city. They took everything good of Arkham Asylum and they added that aspect to it. Man, look at this takedown from up above. Amazing game. I gotta replay these doing some live streams here on the channel. I know my top 10 list is gonna look way different from yours, so sound off in the comments below. Give me your top 10 of your favorite comic book related video games. There's a ton that I wanted to add on the list, like Toxic Crusaders, like Avengers and Captain America. Sound off below. Appreciate you watching and stay minty fresh. Peace.